Gain structure in a recording is key in order to obtain the most polished audio recording as possible. In some cases though, you might lead into distortion. Now, distortion in the digital domain, that means that you're going to be losing a lot of the harmonic and partial that belong to the spectrum of a sound. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the declip module inside RX in order for you to retain the gain structure and rebuild the harmonic content that was lost due to improper gain staging. All right, right now we're gonna take a look at how to solve distortion problem that were caused by maybe gain structure not being fully taken care of prior to recording, which is something that you always have to pay attention so that the clip module should be the last resort. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let you hear this clip. You can already see and tell that the clip was beyond the zero dB full scale, meaning we let into distortion. Now at this point you might want to lower a little bit your headphones level. Ciao! In this demonstration I'm purposely distorting the audio. I'm gonna lower a little bit our volume over here. So as you could hear over here, uh, the, the audio was greatly distorted. I mean if I zoom in a tiny bit you can also see that the, um, the type of wave we, we recorded is a square wave. Meaning that right now we are way beyond the zero dB full scale, and that we're starting introducing nasty and unwanted digital distortion. All right, from here, what I'll do is to, again, go into my audio suite isotope and pull up my RX Connect. I'm gonna tell the module to send it to repair, send, and we're back into isotope RX. I'm gonna let you see the audio file. I'm gonna give it a shot and play it from here. Ciao! In this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. So as you can see here, uh, this little top range over here tells us that we are way beyond, as I was telling you before, our 0 dB full scale. So the first thing you want to do here is to reduce a little bit the gain, or better, the overall gain of your signal in order for you to, again, rebuild a little bit more the, the spectrum of, uh, of our sound. In other words, we need to provide a little bit headroom for the declip module to work properly. So I'm going to go Command A and select all. I'm going to go under my utility, gain, and I'm going to reduce this 10 decibel. All right. So right now we have purposely reduced the entire clip so we're not going to have differences in volume throughout the recording. Ciao. In this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. Again, I've reduced the overall volume of the clip, but that doesn't mean that, you know, the distortion is gone. We have still the distortion, just at a lower level. So from now, I can go ahead in my module chain and choose my declip module. Now, the declip module has few features. The first one over here on the left is our threshold. And it pretty much shows us an histogram of the audio. It displays how many samples are present in a given signal level over the window of time. Now, the longer lines over here represent um, our, our, our distortion over here, which the module already tells us where the distortion comes in. And therefore, right underneath this gray lines over here, we could uh, start to fix the, the portion of the audio that passes the zero dB full scale. Now, what you can do here is, again, use the suggest button where the module is going to more or less tell you where approximately it would like to, to start fixing the audio. I generally, after I give a click of suggest, I'm going to go just a little bit below this gray line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see over here, the line starts over here. Another thing you want to do over here is to leave the pass limiter option on. In other words, this prevents the audio from reclipping once it's been declipped. You have to think that the declip module always try to rebuild the, the missing information. So in order to avoid later on clipping, what you want to do is to leave this pass limiter on. And as a makeup gain, I'm going to leave it defaulted at zero as I'm pretty much touching the entire spectrum over here. All right, 
What I could do is to either preview it or compare it. Let's try to do compare. Again, uh, compare is a fantastic tool that lets you preview the before and after, though you could do the exact same thing through the history uh, tab over here. All right, let's preview our sound as it was before. Ciao, in this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. And after. Ciao, in this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. All right, I'm gonna render it once. And as you can see already, our wave file looks much, much, much healthier. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I give a second shot of render, what can happen. Ciao, in this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. I'm gonna go back one level through the history tab. Ciao, in this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. All right, I think this is this is a good healthy level. So once you're done with this, again, I'm gonna go into Pro Tools, create a new playlist, that RX, and then I will send it back to Pro Tools, render. And again, the volume might be lower, but again, you can adjust this with clip gain or the clip gain within RX or with simple automations. So again, I'm gonna let you hear the before. Ciao, in this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. And the after. Ciao, in this demonstration, I'm purposely distorting the audio. So as you could see, even if audio lets do distortion with the clip module inside the Rex, there are many ways for you to rebuild and reconstruct the missing information. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.